Hello everybody uh, and welcome to this uh, part on speech recognition and text to speech synthesis of this particular MOOC. What we will do in this particular uh, set of lectures is I will be talking about speech technology, we will divide it into two parts. The first part which we are going to do right now is on automatic speech recognition. So essentially what we will cover in this block is we will discuss what is automatic speech recognition and what are the challenges in implementing automatic speech recognition systems on a cell phone because that is probably the most ubiquitous device which people use these days. We will then also discuss on how can speech technology be used for developing applications on a cell phone by taking some typical examples. Okay. Now let us see what are the broad objectives of speech recognition for machines. So essentially when we say speech recognition, we are talking of speech recognition using or by machines. So what is the goal of automatic speech recognition? It is to automatically extract information transmitted in the speech signal. So you can also call speech recognition as a process by which the incoming speech signal is converted to text. Many people also refer to this as signal to symbol transformation. So you, you have a speech signal that can be recorded over a microphone which needs to be converted to text. Okay, now if take a look at this figure, broadly you can classify speech recognition into three parts. One is given the input speech signal, so you see the speech signal which is described in this particular form. So you have a incoming speech signal which is input to a module called speech recognition and let me assume that I am saying how are you. The objective of this particular module is to make sure that it outputs the words how are you. So essentially the machine recognizes what you are speaking. So you will also have some allied applications like language recognition where one speaks in a particular language and the system tells in which language the speaker was speaking. Or you could have something called speaker recognition where you are essentially trying to find out who was speaking from a set of speakers. This gave you a broad objective of what is speech recognition and different possibilities there. And uh, now let us get into a little bit of nitty gritty on how we do speech recognition on a mobile phone. So the definition of speech recognition, it converts a speech signal acquired by a mobile phone to a sequence of words. So the recognition output can be used in many places. Some of these applications are in command and control. When I say command and control, what it means is essentially I am trying to switch on a device or off a device. So I will say switch on, I will say switch off. So these are command and control applications. So I could probably dictate my email and that is one other application or I could do search via voice. Typically you have these applications on Google these days or I could use speech as a form of communication between machine to machine. Now the output can also be used in dialogue management and more complicated things like natural language understanding. Right. So what can you do with it? There are several applications. Some of the broad applications are you can dictate using speech, you can do call routing, you can do directory assistance which means say I want to search for a particular phone number, I speak the name of the person, I get back the telephone number of that person. I could do travel planning, booking tickets using voice or I could do some kind of complex logistics using voice. Okay. Now this block diagram gives a very broad overview of the speech recognition technology. So let me see if I can start from one end. So you essentially have the speech signal which I am trying to mark out now which is input into a microphone. So let me call this as a microphone. Now this voice signal is essentially fed into something called the speech recognition engine. Now the speech recognition engine essentially recognizes speech or it converts incoming speech signal into text. Now this is obviously connected on both sides to an application manager and also to a graphical user interface manager. An application manager is the manager that essentially pipes the data coming in from the interface to the device. So the device in our case is supposed to be the cell phone. Okay, now what are the examples you can have? Say for example, you are talking to a phone and asking what can I help you with? So you probably say what is the best smartphone ever and then it says the one you are holding. So there are two aspects to this. What can I help you with is recognized by the cell phone and once it finds out that you are holding the best cell phone, it tells you that the one you are holding. So essentially this involves both ASR as well as text to speech synthesis which we will call as 
TTS. So essentially the other aspect that one needs to note is when you are doing recognition on a cell phone, these are very resource constrained devices, the computing power is less when compared to a desktop and therefore typically the functionality goes as a client server or as client network mode of running. Okay. Now what are popular commercial applications of speech recognition if you are interested in? You have this very popular application called Siri on Apple iOS. Now Siri actually helps you with a lot of things. So some of these things are captured in this picture. So you can search for restaurants, you can search for movies, you can search for events, you can search for local businesses, you can hire a taxi. There are a lot of things Siri can do. Probably if you have an iOS device, you should take a look at uh, Siri and try uh, accessing uh, information using speech. So essentially what Siri does is you will probably tap a button and then you will probably say something into Siri and it will give you the information that you need. Now one other typical application that very popular application is Google Voice. Now the advantage of Google Voice is that it is available on any iOS and uh, you could do lot of things using the power of Google. So essentially you are connecting to the power of Google using your voice. So one of the applications could be probably locating an address as it is shown here or you would want to find weather information using Google voice. So probably I would say I want the weather in my city, city name and weather that would give me the weather information. Well these are some of the popular applications. So as I said earlier when we look at a cell phone the recognition process technically is not done on the device because the device is resource constrained. So what you do is you follow a client server based approach where the client is your cell phone. So you speak into your microphone of your cell phone. The first part actually does some kind of noise reduction which is very important because you often speak in noisy environments. Then there is a process of feature extraction which is slightly technical but it actually gets some meaningful numbers from the speech signal. Now that is piped into the speech recognition engine. Now typically that is speaker independent because you would want the speech recognition engine to be independent of any speaker who speaks. So what are the inputs to this? The inputs are the phoneme reference, the word models and the grammar. So it is something like you make the machine understand what are the units of speech, what is the grammar that it needs to know to recognize speech. Now the transmission is typically done over ISDN, GSM, IP, there are different ways of transmission. Now once the recognition is done, so you are obviously looking at some kind of transaction which is coupled to an application. For example, if you are doing a banking transaction, you would say something, it would be coupled to that particular application. So broadly, so therefore you can divide speech recognition into the front end and you can, the final processing is called as the back end, fine. So what are the issues for speech recognition? Not going too much into technical details, but what are the broad issues one would face if you were to do speech recognition on the cell phone? See, see the problem mainly is that of memory crunching. As I said earlier, the cell phones have got limited memory, they are small devices and therefore you do not have lot of memory to do the processing. Of course, the problem of computational complexity is always there and therefore you need more computational power on the cell phone which it obviously does not have. And then comes the requirement of power, cell phones have got batteries which do not last for a long time and therefore there is obviously a problem of power requirement. Now let us take a simple example to illustrate what are the issues involved in speech recognition. Now let us say I want to recognize a phrase, their car. So what we will do is, let us say it is split up into these smaller units, the, a and er. So what we are trying to do is we want to recognize their car. So what does the recognition essentially do in such case? Let us take a very naive example but a very good slide which is available from University of Michigan. So I want to recognize these basic phonetic units which will form obviously the word their car which has got two words, their and car, okay. Now these are actually something called as, we build what are called as statistical models. They are called hidden Marco models, let us not get into too much of detail into that. But essentially you are trying to build a probabilistic model which will find from the given speech signal what is the probability that the first unit was the. So that is what we are trying to do here. So now this is your hidden Marco model, this, this is a simple animation which we can run through. So you traverse through this model, so this is your the, okay now you have also coupled a and er. So these are two other phonetic unit models, so you cascade them, so you have there. Okay. Now the problem with speech recognition is that it could be recognized as there or it could be recognized as the ear as you can see from the slides. So it is always often a possibility that it could be recognized as there or the ear because they are very close. 
So it depends on how well your system is whether it recognizes as there or the here. Now the complexity is not over here because we considered only two possible applications. Now on top of this you have got the next word car which obviously has got some possibilities like cap or cat. Now this, this is a very small subset of the search problem we have taken. Now what happens is there are numerous possibilities for there. It could be there, the year or now it could go on, go on, on and on and become very complex because in practice you have got several possibilities for the and car. So if you essentially have to run through all the possibilities and come up with an engine that gives you the best possibility and the correct one, the topmost one is supposed to be the output of the machine. So what this essentially tells us is that the search is pretty complex when you do speech recognition. Okay. So search it takes roughly 50 percent of the total time. It depends on the vocabulary. You have a larger vocabulary of what the search is going to take more time. The smaller the vocabulary, you are doing well on time efficiency. So there are several solutions. I will not get into the technical details, but for those of you who are uh, technically savvy, you can probably take a look at this. You can come up with efficient search techniques, network optimization, some kind of pruning methods or you could use some kind of dynamic grammar which we call as multipass method. So what I suggest is this can be taken a look for people who are technically savvy, otherwise broadly you need to understand point one. Okay. Now what are the applications of speech recognition? I will take one example of a system that is built at IIT Kanpur. This is essentially funded by the government of India. We are trying to do speech recognition based access of agriculture commodity prices. Now if you take a look at the picture, you see that uh, we have done this for a state called Uttar Pradesh in India which has got several states. You can see the listing of the districts there. I think we have only around 70 districts here. So essentially what this system does is a farmer can call into a particular telephone number and the system prompts him to say the, uh, the name of the district. He says the names of the district and the crop price he is interested in and the system essentially gives him back the information that he requests for. So essentially speech recognition can be used in the development of several socially relevant applications apart from the usual fancy applications like Siri and Google Voice. So thank you. This is the end of the first module and uh, what we have discussed here is the basics of automatic speech recognition and a possible application which we have implemented here. The next part will cover text to speech synthesis. Thank you.